Okay, let's get started. So good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Claire Kirkpatrick, and I'm the Club Development Manager at Motorsport UK. Um, this evening, we have Lynn Spur from 750 Motor Club to talk to you about her electronic filing system, which she's created to file all the digital paperwork on events. So to start with, if we could just do our normal housekeeping. So if Lynn, you're happy to go on to the next slide. Okay, so today's webinar is being recorded. Um, and it will be available for you to watch back in a week or so. Um, everybody is muted except for the panellists, but if you'd like to ask a question, then please do so using the Q&A function, which is at the bottom of your screen. Um, please feel free to submit questions as we go through the session. We'll do our best to answer them, and Lynn will take questions at the end as well. Um, also, tomorrow you will receive an email um, through Zoom, thanking you for attending tonight, and with a link to a survey. We'd really appreciate your feedback and ideas for future webinars. What would you like us to provide you information on? So um, we'd really appreciate if you could answer those couple of questions for us. So now it's time for me to hand over to Lynn who has kindly offered to share this resource with you that she has created. So huge thank you to Lynn and um, over to you. Okay, thank you. So uh, hello, good evening, everybody. I hope you've all been enjoying the sunshine today. It's been a grand co uh, couple of days. So over to, um, I'm gonna go through a series of slides, um, which is a little bit about the filing system itself, how we got there, um, and then if there's time at the end, um, I'm going to jump into a little demo of the filing system. Um, and obviously we've got Claire and James available for Q&A. So please keep asking questions. Um, there's nothing, you know, just ask questions because there's nothing wrong with asking questions. It's probably just something we haven't thought of. So um, just before uh, we get underway, the first slide, can it be adapted and is it flexible? Um, I make no apologies. My background is fixed venue. Um, so I tend to think about meetings and timetable sessions. Am I on time? Am I behind time? Um, other people will have other pressures and other things to think about at their events. So when I say meeting, I may be meaning event. I think the two terms are very interchangeable. Um, I have qualifying sessions and races. Folks on rallies will have stages and sections. And I'm sorry, you know, if I don't get all of the terms correct. So the first question I'd pose really is, could a post chief report, you know, the little guy standing at the side of the track, um, could it be replaced with a stage commander report? And at the bottom of the screen there, I've just got a little box of what the menu, uh, menu system of the filing system could look like. So there you go, asking the question, could my post chief log become a stage commander report? Um, we've just got to think about how we want to file it. So back in 2019, uh, we didn't know much about COVID. We had uh, race meetings and we at the 750 were no different. We had a very physical uh, paper-based filing system. It used to arrive at uh, every race meeting in its plastic container with its uh, binder files um, and its hanging files. We knew what it was and we knew what it was doing because we had a hanging file for the steward and one for the clerk and one for the timekeepers and people would be in and out of race control all the time getting their copies, adding their copies. So yeah, it had a couple of advantages. It was simple. We all knew what we were doing with it and everybody could have their own copy. There's something quite satisfying about a piece of paper. Disadvantages, like everything, there's disadvantage uh, to them. Uh, prone to error. Um, it did take a lot of time to make sure that everybody had got the right copy. 
And, you know, what I've tried to do is just inject that little visual where we had row upon row of filing cabinets with uh, copies of old paperwork. Now, some people like to read words, some people uh, prefer a visual. So what I've tried to do here in this slide is basically show you the process that we used. We'd receive a piece of paper. Did it need a timestamp or the clerk's signature? Then it'd go to the photocopier and it would get divided out. So this is saying to you exactly the same as the previous slide, um, but just in a visual format. So what changed in 2020? Well, there was that thing called COVID um, and it took us a while to get back to motorsport. We realised that, you know, following the guidance of Motorsport UK, something had to change uh, with our filing system. And for those of you that may have heard me speak on the Clarks and Stewards webinar a few weeks ago, it wasn't broken, but we had to change it. So we had to get rid of all of that paper um, and minimise the impact of the change we were making, um, because it's one less thing to think about. And I always sort of make that um, analogy with that uh, I'm driving my car on the continent. Um, when I get into the higher car where the driving seat is on the wrong side, I don't like it. So that's a change. How could I avoid it? Um, and so we decided that we would try a computer based system. So sat down and thought about it. Version one um, was. I think a monumental failure. Um, it showed us very, very clearly what would and wouldn't work. Um, we had folders um, on a Google Drive and we copied and we pasted documents in and out. Um, and we came away from that meeting and we said, well, at least we now know what won't work. So on we went to another race meeting, version two, um, definite improvement. Um, I introduced the concept of scripts at that point. So um, it was good, but it was error prone. Um, I don't think I quite worked out how many different ways there were to spell championship, but at your bottom dollar, we found them. So back to the drawing board. We knew that we were headed in the right direction at that time. Version three, much more complex behind the scenes. And my goal in all of this is to make it look simple on the surface and let the computer do the processing work. Um, so we ended up with a standard set of folders, um, standard sets of document names, um, try and name them all in the same format. Um, and the two big benefits of that were the elimination of the spelling mistakes. We now only had one way to spell championship. Um, and it actually made setup for upcoming meetings uh, much, much quicker. Never one to stand still. Um, we're now at sort of version four, version four and a half. Um, we've introduced something called ad hoc filing, um, which is where the filing system can cope with those documents that you've not met before. And there's always going to be one, where do I file this? Where does it need to go? So the filing system will now take care of that for us. Um, I've also um, spent some time adding in things like email. So we can now email um, drivers, competitors, entrants um, with their versions of forms if they've been in receipt of a decision that they need to know about. Sometimes um, more towards the end of the year competitors will tell us that they are racing with a sealed engine. Well, they email it in, we process it, and the filing system will send an email to let them know that we've received it. So it's now starting to get um, to be quite a central part of race day for us. Going back to what I said earlier, some folks can work with the picture. Um, easier than the words. 
So as what I've done here is just pop for you the um, diagram of what happens. Instead of a piece of paper, we now have an email arrive. Does it need a timestamp or signature? Same question. We just treat it a little differently. Um, sometimes we need to convert documents from spreadsheets um, and we can do that. So now we've got the laptop, which has replaced the photocopier. So we get rid of all of that paper. We make our file copies. And at the end of the day, they're on a USB stick. So the process is the same. It's just the tools that we're using that are different. So first thing we spoke about was, does it need a timestamp or a signature? This was um, one of our challenges. How do we replicate that um, in the real world electronically? And the answer was we found, um, some of you may be familiar with it, PDFs and Adobe. There's a little known uh, feature in there called stamps. And if you just look towards the bottom of the screen where my mouse is wafting, that's a technical term, uh, me wafting my mouse, um, we can see that I've created a stamp that's got the word released and there's some standard text. And one of the benefits of the dynamic stamps as they're called within Adobe is they'll always put the right date and time on them for you. And why did we choose that? Well, there was minimal configuration. There is a little file that you've got to go in and play with. Um, and I'm more than happy to share that with you um, later. And we've had con confirmation that the printed signature is valid. So filing it electronically, uh, what you're going to see now on screen is a snapshot um, or snips, as they call them, of the screens that the filing system will present when you're using it. So we have what I call the document group, um, and we try and categorize all of our forms into the different subject areas. Um, Clerk of the course decision, logs and reports, miscellaneous, MSUK, on my list of things to do to extend that to Motorsport UK, qualifying and results, scrutineering. Once you've selected one of these groupings, the second box, which is hidden, so we've now shown it over here, when I choose COC decision, these are my standard Clark forms. Um, we can add to this list, we can take them away. You might want to replace um, for fixed venue folk, overtake under red, overtake under yellow. It would be perfectly possible to use flag infringement. Um, but this was a choice we made. Um, and these sorts of changes are probably once you get familiar with the actual tool in the background, 30, 40 second changes to make got your COC decision up, we've chosen contact, and the filing system says, well, do you want to do it? Let's go check it out. Or do you want to cancel and just leave at that point? I'm going to pretend we've checked. Part two, the, um, there's a control sheet in the background of the filing system. Um, and it knows what it needs in order to be able to file in our example. A clerk's decision regarding contact, contact even. It wants to know the meeting, it wants to know the session and championship, and the driver's competition number and name. So moving over to the right here, we provide that detail, um, the session and championship, and the meeting, they're all pre-formatted so you can only choose from the list. And this really does help to avoid um, that numerous different ways there are of spelling championship. Competition number is a little bit of free text. What I do here is I try and provide the filing system operator with a visual nudge as to what information we're looking for. So competition number and driver name here, 
we've replaced that with number 23, Davy Jones. Again, you have the option to leave at this point, or you can go ahead and file it. Clicking on file, and hopefully, if time permits, we'll get into a little demonstration of this. Uh, we just choose our file document and put it on the photocopier. You can't see it on this screen, but then there is another file button and you would go on and file it. At that point, the filing system, depending on the form and whether you said you want it to email out or not, um, and again, that's configurable, um, it will ask you here, I'm just showing you that it can do it, put in the starting text for your either your driver's first name or his second name. And we can see here, I just entered CO in this example, and it found me Andrew Cooper and Colin Smith. I mean, I know in the prior example, it was Davy Jones, but hey, work with me on this one. Double click to select and move on. And then you can see the box it fills in and we carry on. Once you've filled in the email and all of the details, you then, funnily enough, it pops up with a let's email it screen. So on the prior screen, we had our ceiling declaration, Andrew Cooper. It's now going to go to Andrew Cooper's email which obviously it's not for our presentation here, but so someone at somewhere.com. And in the 750, um, our chief scrutineer always likes to receive a copy of these. And I've got some standard text that I can fill in. And again, that can be customized to whatever your requirements are. There's no hard and fast rules. I think the only limit with the email is you're probably limited to about 500 characters um, with this particular method. So on race day itself, we now have a set of folders um, and these folder names are free choice. You can call them whatever you want to call them. Um, we arrived at this particular sequence, um, purely trial and error. Uh, we used to have a number three hyphen um, race director, but that is incredibly similar to the Clark's version. So it didn't appear in this version that I'm showing you today. Our Motorsport UK steward, timekeepers, race admin secretary, and the circuit. Circuit ones, again, apologies, fix their new thing. Um, in there tends to go things just like noise reports. When we go to MSV circuits, we find it's easier when we're filing noise forms, put them everywhere that might want them. Then if they do want them, they're there and you haven't got to scrabble around to get them. Um, sometimes the circuits don't want them. They just need to know that it's done. There is a file here um, originally. I always have a little wry smile with myself on this one. It gets a copy of everything. Um, and it's a little different to the other folders. And I'll show you its contents on our uh, next slide or two. Um, but this one is really, really useful for post-meeting. All of this stuff is finished, the championships, your track sessions, whatever, we're finished with them. And I now want to consolidate my storage. Well, the only thing I need is my single filed folder um, and the rest can be backed up or deleted. So what we do on race day, and it's 750's first day out this year on Easter Monday um, is we create a shareable link for the Motorsport UK steward. I provide the steward with that link and then they have the freedom, if they wish, they can keep an eye on the folder on the day, see what's progressing. I mean, obviously there is communication between the clerks and the stewards. Um, 
They can come and talk to us about documents that are appearing in that folder if they wish. And at the end of the day, they're free to download it and they have a copy of all their documents. So it's almost like a self-completing Motorsport UK stewards pack. Um, and some of you might be cheering in the background, although I can't hear you. Um, again, just at the bottom of the screen there, these are na naming conventions that we came up with because free practice one, Q1 through three in this example, and then into races actually stacks up nicely alphabetically. So in the Motorsport UK Stewards folder, um, per Motorsport UK guidelines, there we have our four folders. There was some guidance issued last year as to what form goes in each of these folders. And the filing system is soft coded. So it is changeable if, you know, for example, at some point in the future, technical working groups decide that they want to split their items out into something else, or maybe the general group um, want to see race results in one folder and something else in another. Because it's soft coded, those changes can literally be made in minutes. So that's when I set out to do it. I didn't want to spend my entire life doing this. So I invested the time in making it flexible. Um, I mentioned on the prior slide that we'd come to the example set of file folders. Um, so here, this is more like subject areas. So you can see um, bulletins, briefings, are there entry changes, all the grids, uh, lap charts and times, results. So we know, So when you want to consolidate, having used the filing system, you only need to take away one folder with all its subfolders beneath it. And that's a big advantage because these things do take up space. We do get flippant um, with storage space, I think, these days. Um, I uploaded a couple of video files today for something else I'm working on. And before I knew where I was, you know, I was three gig into an upload. Things do take up space. So again, making things simple post-meeting and saving space was also another of my targets. Um, going back to our Motorsport UK stewards judicial folder, um, one of the advantages of using scripts to name your folders and also your documents, you get them named in a consistent and standard way. So what we chose to do at the 750, and again, if you decide you want to take um, this set of scripts or filing system and use it in your own organization, um, you know, we decided we wanted to call all of our decision sheets, clock of the course decision, a one word or two word um, what it was, where it came from and who it applies to. So we've got, you know, A. Williams, Astin Wigley, uh, a young chap by the name of Donald Twig there. And these are all fictitious people. So I'm not revealing anything that shouldn't be out there. And one of the other benefits is if all of your information is going in in a consistent way, it's very easy to pull it out in a consistent way. So the filing system will also create the judicial summary. Okay, moving on. Um, what did we need to run this? Um, these, this was sort of like the shopping list after we'd got it up to about version four. Um, this was our shopping list. It is Windows based. Um, there is the opportunity out there to make it platform independent and move away from Windows. But and I'll come back to it in a moment. Um, we've decided to stick with Windows for the time being. Um, and this was basically the spec of the PC that we went out and bought to do, do it. Internet connectivity. One of the benefits of Windows cloud storage systems is they will catch up 
if there is a temporary loss of the internet. Um, it's been a hot topic in quite a few of the sessions that I've been on lately um, as audience, not a panelist, talking about things like the internet. Um, because Windows, when it's using cloud-based systems, is actually a synchronization process. So it's checking, do, are these two things the same? If there is a loss, they will catch up. That, that's something that um, I haven't yet been able to find in true cloud storage, but I'm sure there's somebody out there that will tell me that um, that isn't quite the case. I use a tool called Auto Hotkey um, to actually write the scripts in. A um, couple of benefits here. One is it's free, um, and the second is that it's it's very English. Um, so you know, if you want it to move a file from a folder to the recycle bin, the command is file recycle. So it's quite intuitive in its language. Um, Adobe Reader, uh, DC, that's the tool I touched upon when we said we were looking for rubber stamps to stamp our documents. The storage system, um, I've actually made it work um, on a trial and error basis with the four that I've put here. A um, couple of comments, number three and number four. Dropbox Basic is a freebie, um, but it's quite limited in its storage and it works really well. Um, there's a little configuration that you need to do on laptops that you've got it installed on, but it is a good solid thing. OneDrive and iCloud Drive tend to be more subscription based. There is a small element of free storage, um, but I don't know what the costs are. Google Drive, um, a couple of things to say about that. A lot of folk know about Google Drive. Be very careful if you're going to use Google Drive that you understand the difference between the cloud side and what it looks like on a laptop. And again, I would be more than happy to answer questions on that. Um, spreadsheets, I said it was uh, soft coded and I hold all of the data that gets it configured in a small set of spreadsheets. Um, understand Windows. Um, you don't need an in-depth knowledge, but you need to be reasonably familiar with things like copy, cut and paste. Um, and overall, on race day, do allocate a single person. This is certainly true in the fixed venue environments. 750, as I'm sure you know, uh, we're a club that run a lot of races on a race day. It's not uncommon for us on a two day meeting, we will have 22, 23 races, plus their associated qualifying sessions. So there is a lot of paper um, flying around. So it's very good practice, I think, to have somebody dedicated to it. What next? Oh, yes. What else can it do? Um, this is something that has happened quite um, quickly in the last the last lockdown. Um, I realized that because we were putting information in um, and the way that we were taking information out, I could make um, other things available. So just going down the left hand side here. Um, it does have its own optional Clark's decision form module. No requirement to take it. It's there if you wanted to use it. Um, one of the benefits, you put all your decision forms in. Um, it can log them so you can take them out nice and easily. The quick log entry changes. Quick log is a concept that um, I'm introducing into the 750 uh, at our next meeting. There's always information that happens last minute. So race admin will be one end of the building, the timekeepers are in another, and we've got an entry change. Well, instead of trying to get a piece of paper to them, um, we submit a quick log entry and timekeepers can see it immediately. Um, similar idea for get driver's details. We know who our drivers are on a weekend, 
put that information in, it makes it very easy for the filing system to pull them out. The next two pretty much do what they say on the tin. Um, I've got championship judicial regs in there because when I do a clerk's decision form, I also need to know if there are anything from a championship perspective that gets applied and sealing logs. Again, probably more um, towards the end of the year, but it's always good to know who's racing with um, a sealed engine. The right hand side of the screen is more of an admin function. Um, I've spoken a couple of times about the number of ways there are to spell the word championship. Um, the computer only spells it one way, and that's the way that you put it in. So if you make a spelling mistake when you put it in, the computer will generate or carry that on. At least it's spelt consistently. Um, so I've got a quick sort of two or three minute um, method of creating all of those folders that we saw earlier. Okay, um, right at the beginning of this um, set of slides, I said, is it flexible? Absolutely. Uh, is it adaptable? Absolutely. And I did apologize because I'm a fixed venue person, you know, and on the right here, so we've got my standard race meetings. Um, well, we can call them events and we can have a mix of rallies um, and again, um, fictitious meetings or what. Um, I had a meeting on Halloween and bonfire night and then there's a couple of rallies. Um, and I don't know how, what is a naming convention in the rally world for sections. So I just threw a few at the filing system and it coped. So last slide, I think. I can't remember. Um, a bit about me. I've always had an interest in computers. I was a data analyst, so I did like everything ship shape and definitely in order. Um, I didn't know anything about coding at the start of lockdown one. I think we're just coming out of lockdown three now. So I took it on as a personal challenge, mainly to keep me sane. I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know about. I've had a whale of a time developing this um, and I am more than happy for you to take it and share it um, with you. Um, Claire has very kindly offered the club development at motorsportuk.org uh, um, email so that if you've got questions, you can fire them off to Claire. And if there's enough interest, I'd be more than happy to sit and do a more detailed session. So that's the end of the presentation. I think it'd probably be good if I paused for a couple of moments um, just to catch my breath. And then maybe Claire would like to ask if there's any specific questions before I jump into a little demo. Back to you, Claire. Yes, yeah, so there's a couple of themes coming out in questions. So, um, I thought I'd ask you those as we mm -hmm. have calls. Um, there's, I think, two, three questions about inputting the data. So making sure the email addresses and the, the driver details and license numbers. Um, mm -hmm. How do you do that? And is that easy? Yeah. Um, uh, Reminds me, when we're going through a little demo in a minute, I can actually put um, my own email. Well, I'll put myself in as a naughty driver. Um, and then I'll put in a, sort of like an email address um, and then you'll see it come up on the screen. Great. Um, and then the other theme that is coming out is about the security and GDPR side of things. So um, how many people have access to it? Um, okay. Yeah. So with the um, Dropbox, um, uh, or any of the storage systems side of life, there is an authorization method. So the club or whomever the club appoints to actually manage um, those links is in control of that. So what I, do, what I do personally is at a race meeting, 
I create a link for the Motorsport UK steward for his folder on the day for that meeting. Once we archive it, uh, because we're using Dropbox Basic, which is quite limited in space, that link disappears at the same time. So even if the Motorsport UK steward had shared that link with other people, it would disappear as soon as we archive the meeting, which is usually 14 to 18 days. Okay, so um, it's only officials that have access or is it just yourself and then you send links out? Who actually has access to this system? Um, within the 750, again, it ties back to the authorization methods on the storage system. Um, so it's very closely controlled. So we have, um, uh, for those people that know folks at the 750, Giles, Nikki and James, who are on the race admin side, the clerks on the day. Um, and we have a team of clerks that um, attend to work with us quite closely. Um, if we had a visiting clerk, we'd allow them access um, and then remove that access after the day. Plus, of course, my willing victim or volunteer who sits and manages the filing system on the day and timekeepers. Thanks, Alice. Um, Mark, would you like to go to your demo and we can come to my would indeed. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up version five um, and its admin menu. So what we saw in the slides at the end was this double sided menu. Um, I have got a smaller menu, which if I can just get it to. Whoops, oh, I can move that. So these are the two menus side by side. They're the same. Um, the left hand side does everything. And so the our people at the racetrack on the day um, use this left hand side um, and only the admin functions. I don't have built in security um, to this at the moment. Could it be done? Absolutely, it could. Um, I can think about how it would be done, but because of the security around the actual storage area, um, you're very, it's a very, very small group of people that can get there anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to initiate the filing system. Um, it doesn't look as if the laptop is doing anything, um, but there's a magic set of keys called Control J. It can be changed. Um, and what I've got in the filing system at the moment is quite a lot of pop-ups. The pop-ups can be switched on or off as you wish, as you become more familiar with it. I always try and give people visual clues. So what I'm gonna do is let's have a look at the Dark Woods Rally. Um, so here's my set of folders from the Dark Woods Rally. Um, and you can see I've got just a couple of um, example files in there ready. So let's have, let's think about this. What would we like to do? We'll have a clerk's decision for contact. Let me check. And let me have a look. I've got my young Mr. Twig, whoever he is. There he is. Very simple. It shows you here his first name, his surname. If the information is on file, get his phone number. There's his email address somewhere or somewhere and his license number. Double click him to move on. So we're at the Dark Woods Rally. And I think we will say that he had his contact in stage one. And, you know, this is where th things will start to become interchangeable because these might be words on the screen that are associated with the fixed venue, whereas we're actually using a rally stage. So stage one, again, the visual clue, competition number and name. Let's call him number 23, and we'll just call him D Twig on this occasion. Now over here, if you look where I'm wafting the mouse, this is an empty folder right now. 
So I'm going to go and file this. It's actually filing systems. So you don't have to have this folder at the back open because it takes you into it anyway. And I'm going to pick example file number one and open it. And what you will see happening in the background is that the filing system is moving things around. I'll just minimize that for a moment, and that one. So we can now see any of these that have got the little squirrely arrows on them. There's something happening in the background in each of those folders. And we can see that our example file number one has now been renamed because we had dtwig without any spaces. Made a deliberate mistake there, did you spot it? Um, just so that you guys could see that that's what it was doing. Um, there is then a couple, and I've probably lost them. Oh, here we go. So we saw that uh, young Mr. Twig, his email was somewhere at somewhere.com. And this is, I'm just going to pretend to send it. Obviously, I won't. You just drag and drop, and then you would send it somewhere at someone.com. Probably doesn't work. Um, so that's sort of how you would file a form. I can go on if folks would like me to um, and have another, find another form. But what I'd like to do, somebody said something about the email addresses. So if I go into... Yeah, so adding email addresses and people's um, license code and... Yeah, that's number no. yeah. So I keep in the filing system. Um, there's sort of like some broad areas. I've put together a little manual. Because a list of drivers is a list, it resides in list files. So you just double click and open up this spreadsheet. So you can see here, I've got some fictitious ones. So if we add Lynn Spur, um, and a phone number, because you can see everybody else has got blanks. Um, and let's, um, Fred at flintstones.com. And let's have a license number of one, two, three, four, five, six. Just want that to, um, see if I do that. Bear with me because it doesn't actually want to be a link. Save it. As soon as you make a change, um, it's immediately available. So I'm just going to initiate the, the filing system again. And Clark, we'll have, we'll have a bit more contact. Um, now why? So there you can see that it's now picked up Lynn Spur. There's the phone number I put in, Fred at Flintstones.com. Um, I think we'll go into the Halloween. I'm going to have my contact on Halloween, I think. Um, so I'll be number 48, Lynn Spur. Pick up, um, I did sort of um, take a you know, the steps to put a few example files in before today's presentation. So I'm sure you'll forgive me for that. So it's now, because it knows the filing system is configured to load up the um, email, because you can switch them off, you don't have to, you can now see that the email pre-composed screen has opened up with fred at flintstones.com, which was the example email account that I associated with myself. And you can see here from the decision sheet when we filed it, um, it was decision, contact, it happened in qualifying two, championship nine, I was competitor number 45, and it's called itself L Spur. So I would just drag and drop that into there and then send it. But obviously, 
um, for demonstration purposes, I won't, because I don't think Fred Flintstone needs to know that he's been disqualified from a qualifying session. Um, what else might you like to know? Is, is there any other questions that you'd like me to add, uh, answer? Yeah, let's go to some questions. So, um, could this be used with a local network storage systems, i.e. NAS, in race control that synchronizes with a cloud-based storage system? Uh, off the top of my head, yes. The reason why I'm hesitating is that um, in order to get all of the paths going, um, and I'll speak a little bit of techno speak now. Um, I'll just show on my, you can see folks can see on my laptop, I have things like iCloud Drive installed and Google Drive and OneDrive, etc. The filing system has to know which path to go down. So they need to be static paths. So my what my recommendation would be, if you're going to use a cloud-based system like Dropbox, iCloud, um, you always install the app because you need to be able to get to it through the C users path. Um, if you know about cloud storage systems, you'll probably know about that. Um, and then I run everything locally as well. So I've always got two copies of everything. Um, I used to be a data analysis. Data is power. Um, so the more data you've got, the better. Um, so yes, my answer would be yes, provided you've got static paths. Okay, great, thank you. Um, so what else have we got here? Um, so someone's saying, I assume the filing program itself is installed locally on the filing controller machine, as it were. Yes. Um, is there a provision for remote submission of documents from the field? Yes, there is. Like a rally environment kind of thing. Yes. So what you would do for that is any PC that needed to remotely add information would need the cloud storage system, the auto hotkey setup um, available through static paths. So, I mean, I've got a couple, two or three other laptops um, at home and I use them for testing. So I can go and sit in um, my conservatory on another laptop um, because that other laptop has got auto hotkey and the cloud storage system installed. Um, if you run it from the cloud, um, yes, you can do remote submission. Okay, great. So as long as you've got internet, yeah, yeah, very much so. Yeah. Um, so Luke asks, other than auto hotkeys to code, what runs the filing system for uploading the, the files? Basically, yeah. Basically, it's win. It's just Windows functionality that's written into auto hotkey. So auto hotkey, I believe, is written on something called C plus um, plus. But it, it has obviously some sort of translation engine. So you tell auto hotkey file recycle and you give it a path name with a document name um, and it goes and moves that document from that folder to your recycle bin. Great. Hope I'm making sense to uh, those folks out there. Yeah. <laughs> um. So Bill has asked, can the system work on iPads or tablets? Now it won't work on iPads, will it? Because it's Windows based. Correct. Could you use it on a Windows tablet? Um, provided there's a C colon backslash users path, I see no reason why it wouldn't. I wouldn't, I've not tried it on. There is a cut down version of Windows. I think it's called Windows S. I've not tried it on that. Mm -hmm. um, I have got, um, it's, it's one of the things I'm trying to do to keep me sane, um, is to write this in something called Google Scripts, which would make it platform independent. Um, so yes, you, you would then be able to use it on um, Mac, Android, um, anything that, well, you know, anything that Google could connect to. 
Um, I've had some limited success. Um, it's probably about 70% there. The downside to the Google scripts version, um, and again, this is only because of my limited knowledge, if the internet drops mid filing cycle, um, I've lost documents. Whereas with the Windows Cloud synchronization ones, they catch up again. It would be at that point where, you know, if you really wanted to take it that far, I'd be happy to share what I've done. But because I know so little about that arena, I'd be saying you probably need to call a third party in. Okay, that's fine, thank you. Um, so Dan says, can you, you automatically set it up to forward results to all competitors in a blind copy format? Interesting question. Honestly, don't know the answer. I would have suggested it would be possible, um, but you would have to have some form of distribution list because you can't, it's going to get very, who wants copies, who doesn't. Um, at the 750, what we tend to do is um, it goes onto the club website um, and then competitors go and get it from there if they want it. We, it's more about sort of pull rather than push or is it push rather than pull? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, I, I think setting that up would become administratively burdensome. If you've got a distribution list, absolutely. Um, it could it should just be a blind copy in the configuration script. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to take on the administration of a, that sort of list. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, I think this question has been answered about it running on one PC and if someone else could in emergency help manage, if there was lots of activity, could someone else log in to support? Uh, yes. I mean, yeah, you'd have both have to have um, dual copies of the same thing um, installed. Um, what you have to remember then is that person B that was stepping in to help, um, they could file. Um, it would file to the cloud. It would file to the, them locally. But if you're at the end of the meeting, if you took the file folder from the cloud storage, you'd still have a consolidated copy, so yes. A um, couple of downsides, what if both people went for the same document at the same time? Um, it won't allow, because I've written it that way, to have documents of the same name in the folder, which is, is basic Windows functionality. Um, so yeah, and that's why, I mean, we find that um, our lovely lady that helps us, um, she. It goes in fits and starts. Um, you know, she's either got 10 pieces of paper to file or she's got no pieces of paper to file. It's so we prioritize, um, we've learned to prioritize which documents need to be filed first. Yeah. Okay. So yes, yeah, someone else has asked about having more than one person giving mm -hmm. in your information before the events. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it can be set it, this. I mean, what I do now is um, as soon as our final instructions are out, um, I set up the filing system. Um, I do tend to look after the laptop that it resides on um, because I only have Anne on the day. Um, so I do any background stuff ahead of time and then just hand the laptop over to Anne on race day. Um, it seems to work for us, focusing just on one person. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Toshi was asking about um, a lo local network storage. It says mm -hmm. about asking that was about the local network storage would use a mapped drive letter for storage, mm -hmm. e.g., drive letter E. That way, oh. it would be more resilient than relying on internet connectivity, yep. and yep. could always be synchronized to the cloud later. Absolutely. Um, the, the reason why I use the cloud storage system is the sheet that, um, so for example, I talked about quick log. So if um, race admin um, want to let the timekeepers know, um, they're not necessarily on the same network. 
So we use the spreadsheet on the cloud storage. Um, if you all had access to the same, you know, NAS on a desktop on race day, provided everybody's got the same drive mapping. Um, so it's always going to be E drive or the F drive because the scripts build the filing locations dynamically. So they've got to have, they've got to have a starting point is what I'm trying to say. Great. Well, that is all our questions. Um, thank you very much, Lynn. Unless there is anything else that you feel that you need to share, I think that's been a great overview. Okay. No, um, I think uh, I think I'm done talking. I've heard my husband in the background. I think there might be a glass of wine in it for me in a bit. So. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, thank you, Lynn, for sharing this. Yeah. It's amazing what, what you've created um, mm -hmm. during lockdowns. It's been brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, if anyone is interested, once has anyone got any more questions, wants more information, if anyone um, wants to get copies of the system, um, then email club.development at motorsportuk.org and we will share information and put you in touch. So yeah, great. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, yeah, as people are saying, enjoy your glass of wine and thank you very much. <laughs> Great work. <laughs> oh dear. I, I raise a mic. Well, I'll tell you what, here you go. Look, how about a bottle of water? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time this evening. It's been great. And um, yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs>